This section then covers the general statistics for heads-up play in cash games. In heads-up play, the small blind is always the button. Okay, and the recommendation here is if you were to play heads up uh, strictly uh, and very aggressively, and as as your main as your main game, you would need to know all these numbers very very well. Uh, essentially, a lot of you know a lot of people, especially in house games and stuff, when they're with their buddies, they they like to play heads up to show off and whatever else. Uh, just know that it's ridiculous concerning variance, and your open raising ranges are all well within the the range of a maniac and should also be so so uh, range of a maniac in let's say in comparison with the full ring and a and and also a six max game uh, and here we've got race sizes from the small blind generally three big blinds given your opponent then two to one odds um, and again here adaptation and playing a player is everything in heads up your three bet calling range that means you make an open range uh, an open raise from yeah, either this or this or even seventy percent of all hands and then the player in the big blind uh, re-raises yeah, he makes a three bet four bet range then jacks are better and ace kings general notes on that and then from the big blind you've got here the defense range just means that your small blind open raises and this is what you're going to be playing on with in general, and then defense can either be passive or active. So passive defense, of course, just cold calling the two bet, uh, the open raise from the small blind, and active or aggressive defense would then be re-raising three betting and four betting. As again, always general rule, and there is no fixed must as such, especially in heads up. Again, uh, I mean, it's always a good idea to play the player, um, and in heads up even more so. As we've looked now at the general ranges for the different player types in both full ring and six max, we've looked a bit at the heads up matchups. Um, and I mentioned here that everybody in heads up, if it is just a heads up uh, cash game, everybody's playing a lag maniac kind of style. Something else that we want to look at here is in heads up play, and this would also apply very often to uh, tournaments in heads up, of course, also cash games, and even in blind battles in six max and full ring games where you're just down to two players namely the player in the small blind and the player in the big blind and what we're going to look at right now is first these Nash push and call push ranges and then the Sklansky Chebakov numbers so called and they look like this so initially we've got these uh, heads up push fold Nash equilibrium charts okay this means that you can push open from the small blind whenever your effective stacks are less than or equal to the respective big blinds listed below and the way this works is you basically go to this this chart here you've got uh, 10 let's call it a 10 8 offsuit okay you can push that 10 8 offsuit from the small blind profitably whenever you have 17.5 big blinds or fewer that might seem a bit funny but it's the case because the likelihood of your opponent having a strong hand is, is markedly less in accordance with the number of players. So when you're in heads up, of course, the likelihood of an opponent having a very strong hand is as small as it gets. Okay, so you can profitably push based on fold equity again, of course, um, with a 10 8 offsuit open whenever you have 17.5 big blinds or fewer. And yeah, you can just look at these these numbers as you go down. Um, this is especially created um, by this HoldemResources.net for heads up play in tournaments. And this would of course been uh, be the table that you would then call from the big blind with the respective number of big blinds or fewer with the given hands if your opponent is pushing these ranges above. Okay, just as a quick heads up to that, um, and to show you how yeah how uh, how light people can push given respective stack sizes, for example, jack-4 offsuit is a profitable open push with 5.4 big blinds. Uh, again, just to hit home this point that, um, I'll bring home this point that playing heads up is a wacky and wild game. Okay, and when you look at Sklansky Chubakov numbers here, I've basically created this table from the numbers that these guys published, uh, Sklansky and Chubakov, and what they've done here is analyzed where is it possible 
for me in the small blind when it's folded around to me to first turn over my cards and show them to my opponent in the big blind before I make a move and then push all in and at what range based on certain stack sizes is that profitable even when the opponent only calls when he has an equity advantage I hope that was clear this means that these guys just sat down and said okay what is the maximum stack size I can have with respect to big blinds in order to be able to profitably push with any given hand even when my opponent knows what I hold and plays mathematically perfectly uh, and yeah, wild idea but really brilliant it's also the basis of a lot of uh, yeah, ICM theory uh, for tournament play and stuff like that but uh, really really brilliant and what you see here is open pushes from the small blind this would be basically a scenario where you're in heads up again and what you can push profitably with the different stack sizes into your opponent in the big blind so even with 15 big blinds you can push open right with king 4 suited even king 8 offsuit jack 10 0 right and that every single time you do that with 15 big blinds or fewer you're going to be making a profit in the very long run maybe not in any given hand um, any given session but that over the long run even when your opponent only calls you down when he has an equity advantage okay and he's yeah, he's gonna be calling you down with a lot of times when he doesn't have an equity advantage so um, with this minimum stack size you can push this entire range from the small blind into the big blind open profitably over the long run and you see here even with 35 big blinds in your stack you can open push with fours ace five suited ace eight and king jack suited or better at 95 big blinds okay that's basically when you're playing a, a big stack strategy in heads up you can even push open with nines or better or ace queen or better in, in heads up play and this is uh, a breakdown for um, any time you're you're making steel raises and it's very very clever um, it's very very good for you guys to know too when you're when you're looking at player profiling and ranges and stuff like this the ranges of course as we saw especially in six max become much wider in general as the position gets later so for steals and resteals again defined uh, in great detail in the video on bet types but briefly here a steal is completely independent of what you hold it's a positionally defined move it's when it's folded around to you and you're either in the cutoff which is a position right before the button on the button itself or you're in the small blind and you make an open raise you know, that's a quote unquote steal raise and a lot of players know these numbers so they're going to be pushing exactly this range whenever they do so given these stack sizes okay and you're, you're again your short stack strategy players really know these numbers right because their stacks are going to be anywhere from 25 to 10 big blinds at any given time um, so know know these numbers and know what your hand looks like equity wise against these ranges and adjust accordingly and it's also part of player profiling is also knowing the the player and also knowing what the player is aware of for example a lot of players aren't even aware of these numbers um, is my player conscious is he aware of these Sklansky Chelvakov numbers is he aware that he can make a profitable push even when he shows me his cards with this range when he or I only have 10 big blinds in our stack is a player conscious of how to bet uh, make three bets and four bets light is uh, is a player is an aggressive player all of a sudden adjusting to my uh, to my adjusted tighter range right all these things come into come into play and again the best player profilers are those who are able to based on statistics based on tells especially in the live uh, situation the best player profilers are the ones who can really peg I mean really clearly define a certain type of player based on the statistics given a certain sample size in the online environment and even do the same uh, based on tells appearance all kinds of different things in the live environment and are also able to adjust perfectly and even see when the type of player right the the player profile that they've attributed to a certain individual they're even able to understand and know when this player when this individual is then changing 
his or her style, right? And that's that's where you get into really expert eagle kind of play and expert player profiling. And that's that's the level you want to get to. That's not going to happen in a week, <laughs> as is the goal of this video. But this information should definitely get you on your way. And uh, yeah, with a few hundred thousand hands, uh, both online and live, you'll you'll yeah you'll be uh, you'll be amazed at how closely you can you can uh, put players on ranges, even specific hands. And yeah, when you're at that level, you really you're really reaching the cream of the crop, and uh, at that point, it's uh, you've already seen all the different all the different moves. You've seen hundreds and hundreds of thousands of hands, and the difference between players at that level very often, as uh, Mike Carroll had mentioned, has to do with uh, players who are able to excel in the psychological environment. I mean, understanding tells again this player profiling. Um, perfect adjustments, this kind of stuff. And yeah, again, whenever you're playing players that are as good as you in general or against players uh, where you only have a slight edge, that's uh, that's not going to be good for your win rate in the long run. So always take this information um, with you. Understand whom you're playing against and how many good players are on your table. And any time you're generally at an advantage, Right, and you have a solid edge. It's a good table to play on at. Anytime it's really close, it, you know you're not feeling it. Uh, you had a couple bad beats, etc. Uh, tilt is more likely, and you need to move on. Okay, as a general rule.